It's back! The good, the bad, and oh, the ugly. <laughs> my series is back on my channel, and it just feels, ah, feels good because I've been doing <laughs> review, first impression, unboxing, and, and do it again and again and again. The channel needs some spice, <laughs> a little bit of different. Uh, you know, some old series are coming back. I'm not gonna tell you all of them, but uh, GBU is definitely back on my channel. And I'm, I'm, I'm a little hyped. I had some fun doing this one. This is kind of like a mini GBU and see how my new subscribers feel about it. But uh, I want a GBU, come back home, baby. <laughs> it was born in 2009, it's returning in 2018. I'm sorry, Max40 but I'm taking my shit back. Where are my royalties, brother? going on welcome to uh gbu and it's been years first i want to give out a shout out to my man max forte <laughs> the intro is it was just that just for fun um i love what he did with the gbu series he made it his own he called it gbu uo series while mine was kind of collecting dust um so you know he did a respectful thing he he um he, he came to me years, years back uh, when he first started GBU. My series was collecting dust. I wasn't really that active on YouTube and uh, he just ran with it. Um, so uh, if I can inspire a fellow reviewer, uh, why not? Um, so first and foremost, I want to put the link down below to Max Forte's channel. If you haven't checked out his stuff, please go support a fellow reviewer. Or fragrance family here um that is you know that <laughs> there's these hashtags coming out with with everybody and i think a proper one for my channel and for the fragrance community would be something that i've been boasting about since 2009 is fragrance family and we inspired each other to make the best content for the fragrance family which is you guys the subs the reviewers everybody um, so we're all better for it. So please go check out Max Forte's channel. Um, much appreciated. All your hard work. Um, anybody that shoots a video, takes their time to post a video on YouTube, make a YouTube channel, um, buys a camera, buys fragrances, and does this stuff, I got respect for. So Max Forte, go check out his uh, GBU series. But uh, it's coming back to the original here. So anybody that's new to GBU, they're like, what? the hell's GBU? What, why is Mark jumping around? Well, <laughs> any subscriber of mine back, back in the day, in the GBU days on my channel, um, you guys, you guys, first of all, those subscribers, comment below. You guys are the original, real deal, dedicated members to my channel. You've been on YouTube as long as I have. We're getting old, boys. We, we started in the 20s, now we're in our 30s. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> I certainly appreciate everybody that uh, subscribes to my channel. Even if you're new today, thank you for subscribing. So anybody that's new to this, uh, GBU is a term that I utilized in some of my reviews, speaking of good things about a fragrance, bad things about a fragrance, or a fragrance line, or even a brand. Um, so in this manner, it's going to be a line from Yves Saint Laurent. I've already did a GBU back in 2009. I think it was one of my first ones on the House of YSL. I think I dubbed like M7 the most popular. Um, I really need to revamp that one. So I'm going to be revamping some old ones too because I got way more fragrances. I think I own, back in 2009, I think I own like 10 YSL fragrances. I own like almost 10 La Nuit de Lums or on um, the flankers. So <laughs> my collection has changed since 2009. But anyway, good, bad, and the ugly means, you know, what is good about the fragrance, uh, the lineup, right? Uh, we're going to take a look at the um lineup. So what's the best, the most popular? What is the the worst, the, the worst selling, uh, most underrated, most overrated? The ones that are just in the middle of the pack, maybe some that you want to check out. So this is a great... Uh, series my personal opinion that's why i birthed it <laughs> um 
that really just emphasizes on one brand or one series alone and it will give you tons of information in one little video so let's take a look at this one right here today ysl the lum <laughs> lineup and it's huge there's tons of flankers let's get us started now before we get into anything we got to take a look at the roster we got to see what we're working with here today and uh, let's take a look at a starting five <laughs> more like a starting 15 because the lum series from ysl is a flanker upon flanker upon flanker of two really successful fragrances overall um, so let's take a look at the, the roster rock. is 15 deep i don't own all of them but i own a good chunk i own nine of the 15 fragrances released under the um flagship for ysl we're going to start them off by of course starting off with the one that started it all right down till the end so let's go let's start with the originator the one that is Hey, if this one wasn't successful, we wouldn't have had any of these. So it's got to go with the original Lum by Yves Saint Laurent. This one right here. Um, beautiful, beautiful scent. Released in 2006, so that's where it started. A perfumier behind this. Anne Flippo, Pierre Wagny, and Dominique Rapillon. And you're going to see those names quite a bit. And that's one thing that I appreciated from YSL is they... They continued with the same perfumes. Next was off the commercial success of Lum, YSL decided to start its flankerism. <laughs> and it didn't stop there. So in 2007, they did what uh, any brand would do with a top selling fragrance. They did a summer release. You know, you see this with Le Mal with their Popeye editions or their, their summer editions, Issey Miyake summer, CK1 summer editions. Um, they're, they're flankers that are seasonal based. So they'll release them around March, April, give or take. And they'll go the whole summer and then once stock is done it's done usually they cut them off in around august give or take and then the newer releases come out um so lum ysl decided to release lum odt in 2007 and that one did okay as a summer release in 2008 they brought it back they brought another uh summer edition these things are uber rare you don't see anybody talking about these fragrances I'm lucky enough that I owned one. I don't think you can even find these on, on eBay. Maybe you can, but this one came in. Um, the 2007 edition had a bottle that looked like this. 2008, and that's how you know which ones you have, uh, came in with a baby blue sparkle on it. I do have a fragrance review on my channel on this guy and on this guy. Um, this is, of course, in the retro series. I re I reviewed it like immediately, immediately on 2009. Um, so that was uh, summer edition 2008, and that was it. They're like summer editions, gonzo. Um, so this one didn't do very, very well as far as sales. I own it, of course. Now let's get into 2009. And this is where just everything just started going crazy in the house of YSL because they released their next blockbuster uh, from the UM series. And that is, of course, La Nuit de l'Homme. And I own the 2009 version. I know a lot of you would probably slice me up just for this bottle. Um, this fragrance is uh, absolutely gorgeous. It's one of their best in the game and obviously it spawned a whole bunch of other flankers that you're going to see here. So La Nuit de l'Homme, um, the nose is behind La Nuit de l'Homme, Anne Flippo, Pierre Wagny, Dominique Rapillon. So they brought back the threesome. <laughs> Next in 2010, they brought in Le Parfum. Where is my uh, La Nuit de l'Homme? Le Parfum. I got a little bottle of that one. Um, so Le Parfum released in 2010. I own it. And that was the first flanker of the La Nuit series. Next in 2011, they released a fragrance that I just, just reviewed on my channel, L'Homme Libre. Now L'Homme Libre, uh, all-star perfumiers behind it. Uh, of course, Olivier Polge and Carlos Benim. Um, so big names tied to that one. So they went away from Anne Flippo, Pierre Wagny, and Dominique Repillon on that one. Um, that one, uh, as far as sales go, mm -mm, not, not so well. As far as the Fragcom goes, I just did a review on it. And there's a lot of people in the comments that absolutely love this fragrance. So it does have some love in the Fragcom. Now, in 2011, they also released a Flanker 2 Lum. Because they haven't done one in a while. And this was Lum Cologne Gingembre. This one I really, really like, um, very fleeting, but I really, really, really like 
this one and 2011 release Cologne Jean Jambre. In 2012, they decided to release another flanker to the La Nuit series and this is La Nuit de l'Homme Frozen Cologne. So another EDC in the series and that one a 2012 release. In 2013, they released a fragrance that I don't have which is a flanker to L'Homme Libre and it was L'Homme Libre Cologne Tonic. So they continued with that EDC. It was a tonic series um, and that one uh, was uh, signed by uh, of course Olivier Pulge. So Olivier Pulge came back by himself to do the tonic series for L'Homme Libre. Now in 2013 they also released the uh, L'Homme Parfum Intense and I have that one too. So there it is. Um, that one Dominique Rapillon and Anne Flippo uh, co-creators of that fragrance. So that one, um, I absolutely like that one actually. That one's a pretty good one. In 2014, they decided to release a sport series, L'Homme Sport, uh, Perfumier is behind that one, and Flippo Juliette Caragosoglu, Cozoglu, Juliette K. <laughs> Juliet K. Um, I don't own Lum Sport. Um, actually, kind of hard to find now online. So I am looking for a bottle of that because I want to finish up this whole series. I know I got so much more to purchase, but Lum Sport in 2014. In 2015 is the last bottle that I have in my collection is La Nuit de L'Homme L'Intense. Um, I couldn't pass up an intense version of La Nuit de L'Homme. Um, in 2016, so I don't own this one, Lum Utim has a small uh, <laughs> small following online. Um, and Flippo de Mecropillon and Juliette K uh, signed on that one. 2017, La Nuit de Lum gets its new flanker, O Electric. Uh, o and Flippo de Mecropillon and Juliette K also signed on that one. And now the newest release, Lum. Cologne Blue 2018 release. Juliet K is the only perfumier behind that. So there's your lineup. There's the ones I own. And with GBU, we only talk about the ones I own. Um, but I, I got something for you guys at the end of the video on the ones that I don't own. But GBU is all about the ones that I have a lot of experience with and I have a lot of experience with all of these. Now with the all GBUs, I'm going to run through every single bottle that I own and give you like little clips or little glimpse of what they can give you as a scent. If you want to skip this part, because I know a lot of you may just want to go back to, you know, just the meat and potatoes and see which ones I think are the best or the worst, you can skip that. I'm going to have a timestamp in the description below. So you can go check that out and click on which part you want to see from GBU. So let's get into it because I got nine cents to take a look. And we're going to go by, of course, the uh, the earliest ones. Lum, 2006 release. Now, Lum, uh, very much a fragrance, um, signature scent worthy. This thing, you can wear it. This has been in your favorite fragrance reviewers, probably top summer list, top spring list, top fall list, maybe not top winter, but um, this is... Signature scent all day, every day, dress it up, dress it down. Um, one of my favorites, beautiful. Oh, man, um, it received a nine out of 10 back in 2009 when I first started on YouTube. And during a re-review a few years later, it received a nine again. And if you asked me today, what would I rate this fragrance? I'd probably rate it a nine. Um, it takes quite a bit from many facets, including woods, musk. Uh, you got some florals in here. You got some freshness in here. You got some musks. Uh, it's got some character to the fragrance. Um, it's got some ginger in here. Ginger's your, your big boy in this one. Some mild citruses and some fruity aspects with some spices um, based with some, uh, of course, tonka bean, violet leaf in the dry down. Um, so you're going to hear a lot of these notes, ginger, violet leaf, tonka bean in a lot of these flankers. Um, just because they stayed true to the original um and i like that very clean scent that i always thought was a perfect office scent but don't get it wrong don't get it twisted you can dress this one up down day night anything perf perfect this is the signature scent in a bottle this is your typical high-end designer signature scent um if, if you asked me that this would be your answer no. Now, the perfect counterpart to the signature scent, daily wear scent, would be a nighttime scent, which they named it aptly, La Nuit de l'Homme. This thing, um, these are two behemoths from YSL. Hey, whoa, where are you going? I need, I need you on the strip here, first of all, just to remind me of the introduction. So, La Nuit de l'Homme, perfect complement to l'Homme. In my personal opinion, this is your dark horse against your white horse. And this thing, 
also received a 9 out of 10 from me back in 2009 when I first had my channel. It hasn't been re-reviewed yet, but I'd probably give it a 9 or a 10 now. Um, I really do like this fragrance. It's a cardamom-based scent. It has some sweetness. It has some powder, some lavender, some wood, some spice here. It has some character to the fragrance. It has some sexiness to the fragrance, a lot more uh, sexiness than, than this one, even though this one has some sexiness to it too. Um, it's a great night out scent. It's a date night scent. Uh, fall, winter, arguably, arguably more su successful than the original. Um, Right now, if you ask me, this thing had multiple hypes on YouTube. Hey, I know, I've... <laughs> I started talking about this one in 2009. Then we got J.R. Ryder that, that pumped it. And we got Jeremy Fragrance that pumped it. So uh, between all, all, all these years. So La Nuit de L'Homme has been one of the most successful designer fragrances in YouTube history. Um, so many reviewers pump this shit. <laughs> but La Nuit de L'Homme, um, <laughs> good candidate for the most overhyped, maybe. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway... Uh, La Nuit de l'Homme, uh, an excellent, excellent release from Wise. Now let's go with a couple flankers of La Nuit. We'll start it off with La Nuit de l'Homme Le Parfum. And this one right here, um, didn't do so well on YouTube, to be quite honest. Um, I did a review on this one, so if you want to do, go check it out. Um, I think it's a solid release from YSL, uh, a good release actually. Um, I received eight bottles out of ten on my channel, so it is reviewed. Go check it out. Um, this one, um, dark, it's got some spice. That black pepper always gets me. Smile on my face because it's got that bite to it. It's got that raspberry applesauce-like feel. It has like a little bit of a compote de pomme uh, meets labdanum, some vanilla more into the dry down. It shares the lavender of the original La Nuit. Strong spicy opening. Black pepper with a um, dark licorice uh, fragrance. Nice darker scent. Very solid release that doesn't get much love in the community, which I think is is very very good fall winter scent um i would see this as more of a nighttime scent for me now let's go to the next one la nuit de l'homme lint house i have not reviewed this fragrance on my channel yet um i'm working on it guys i'm working on it i got i got too many to review but this one right here also very very solid Ooh, a lot of florals up top with this one and i thought this scent wasn't going to be as dark especially when you look at the note breakdown um, I think it has, a, what does it have? It has a violet and iris. And I'm just like, this ain't gonna be dark at all. Intense, what are you guys talking about? Well, this one is dark. There's a good amount of, of course, violet. There's a good amount of tonka bean here. Um, you get some powdery aspects from the iris, of course. The violet also throws out some powderiness. Um, you got some sweetness, of course, from the tonka. It smells, you know what it smells like to me? Um, again, I haven't reviewed it. It smells like La Nuit and The Autumn Made a Baby and made a scent. Um, this one, <laughs> um, this one gets a lot of hate because A, it's not an intense version um, of La Nuit de l'Homme. And second, um, people wanted it to perform like an intense version. So more of a nighttime scent, very interesting. Um, dress it up, dress it down. Um, I really like this one. Um, so maybe one of those that's underrated, maybe. Talking about some underrated stuff, I like this one. A little more playful than the others, but I still like it. Um, this is L'Homme Parfum Intense. Um, this one right here, again, when they put Parfum Intense in the name, people have expectations, especially with the darker juice, right? It's darker than L'Homme, and people are expecting something else, I guess. But this one right here, fall base scent, it's got that sweetness. I like it. It's one of those that is sweet, but it's well constructed with the sweetness. Yeah, hell, it's synthetic as hell, but um, it is absolutely darker than this one. Um, it's got an orange blossom. It has some spices. It's got some woods in this one, but it also reminds me that it's kind of built for nighttime use. It, it reminds me almost a little bit of, of you know, it's going to be built like this one for nighttime use. Um, this one reminds me of L'homme libre meets uh, homme meets la nuit parfait. <laughs> it's a very smooth fragrance. I really like it. Um, that one may be on the underrated side of the L'homme series. Now let's take a look at one of the freshies, L'homme Cologne Gingembre, a ginger-based fragrance. And this one, whew, can you guys see that? Probably not. I'm gonna stack them now. <laughs> now you can't even see my face. Um, 
Cologne Change Chambre, oh, this is such an, an amazing scent. Um, it's very weak. That's the only knock on this fragrance. It just doesn't last on my skin. It doesn't matter what I do with it. I can swim in it. It's light, but it's great. It's one of those after the gym type of scents. Um, it's very uplifting too. Spring, summer, daily wear scent. Very ozonic from the violet leaf. This is what L'Homme Libre should have been. Um, it's stealing a little bit of violet leaf and the basil from L'Homme Libre. So it's stealing a little bit from, and you're gonna see a lot of that, that the notes are really intertwined between all these, these flankers. And that's really interesting, but um, yeah. It smells a little bit like Lum Lib, but removing that shitty sweetness up top. It's very authentic. I really like the authenticity in this one in the opening. It has that ginger. It's got that bergamot from the original. Um, it's got some musks here. This is one of those scents that I actually put in my wine cooler and in a really hot day, just put this on and the cool spritz just, yeah, you know the rest. Um, this is a absolute gem actually from the Um series. Next, talking about freshness, let's go with the Summer Series uh, Om L'Eau d'Ete 2008 release. Remind me of that introduction. This one I did review. Um, ooh, slide in a little bit. I'll put it right there. Okay. This received six bottles out of ten out of me as far as the uh, my score on this fragrance. It's very rare, very unsuccessful Summer Series from YSL. It only lasted a few years, and I see why. I mean, it utilizes... The fresher notes, including again, basil comes up again, vetiver, bergamot, violets, ginger. So there's a lot of, again, the same, same notes. There's tonka that backs this fragrance. So it's the tonka in this fragrance, very, very faint, but it still gives a fragrance that familiar fresh sweet combo that you get. But the, the tonka is actually well done in here. Spring and summer scent, of course, daily wear scent. Beautiful. You can dress it up, dress it down. Uh, whatever you wish. Next is one of the last ones from La Nuit de Lame, and this is Frozen Cologne. And this one, I don't know if it has any reviews on YouTube. I'm assuming there is. I'm gonna try to put it on La Nuit here. So Frozen Cologne. Very interesting EDC from the La Nuit series. So I'm still working on my review on this one. Um, it's got a little bit of pepper up top. It's got a little bit of kick with some mandarin and a much fresher version of La Nuit. It really does feel like that. It feels like there's a geranium freshness up top with this one with the Lan Mi backbone back in this fragrance. I'm slowly, and I mean slowly, uh, starting to like this one. Again, another issue with this one is with a lot of these fragrances is longevity and projection. Um, very wearable in the spring, summer nights, and fall. Again, another one of those that you can dress up or dress down. And lastly, Lum Lib. I just reviewed this sucker. Um, so this one, Probably my least favorite, and I'm being honest. Um, I, I really like all of these. They're all really nice. I'm missing one bottle here. I, I need a, to get a 10th here. Um, but Lum Lib received five bottles out of 10 in my fragrance review on YouTube. It's a violet leaf bomb, but it has a very, very synthetic opening um, of a sweetness. It has that familiar basil that you got from some of these flankers, some vetiver also. Um, and that violet leaf note is very, very nice, ozonic, but that sweetness kind of ruins it. Um, again, one of those that's the least interesting, in my personal opinion, of all of these fragrances. And uh, we're missing a spot here, and that's where you guys come in, or we got a subscriber's choice coming up soon. I also like, in this series, to give a little backstory to the brand. Uh, of course, this is a lineup for YSL. It's not about Yves Saint Laurent as a brand, as a men's fragrance brand but just the YSL um, lineup. So it started in 2006 and blossomed in 2009. In my personal opinion, that was the peak of the um, lineup with the re release of La Nuit. I felt like these two bad boys just dominated the men's fragrance game like no other. It was a one-two punch for the house of YSL. And that started one of the biggest modern flanker lineups in men's perfumery. And sales-wise, it has been a very successful lineup for the House of YSL. No one can deny these things are top sellers and kind of put YSL back on the map in the men's game. They didn't really know what was going on after Tom Ford left. And were you going to get something from the House of YSL? Or are they going to flounder a little bit? Kind of like Gucci. Gucci kind of went like, boo. YSL kind of stayed the game and they're like, yes, this is how we're going to push our lineup to the men. So however, recently the UM lineup is starting to lose steam and starting to get some fragrances, starting to get discontinued. 
Um, some not receiving the sales that YSL was thinking they were going to get. As far as the previous flankers that actually have been fairly successful, the bottle sizes are many and plenty for a lot of these fragrances. And I'm jealous of many of my fragrance reviewers on YouTube that have those massive 6.7 ounce bottles of Lum and La Nuit de Lum. I would love to have those. They're beautiful, gorgeous uh, bottles, but I'm still happy with my 3.3 ounce. The one thing I appreciated with the YSL um, lineup is the same noses were brought back, or most of them, and many notes were interchangeable to each scent. Notes like ginger, tonka, violets, lavender, basil were all utilized in some case or form in an homme or la nuit de l'homme flanker. Um, so I really appreciate that they continue to utilize the, the same notes in a different manner, um, in, in different flankers, utilize them for, you know, a uh, very, very fresh fragrance to a much darker fragrance or a, a daytime office scent fragrance. So it was very interesting that they can morph that a little bit, utilize the same noses. I appreciate that too. The one knock on the house, or a couple knock on the house, um, that a lot of people that may be watching this video are going to say, well, this is what I didn't like about the UM series. And I can see your point is, A, reformulations. La Nuit de l'Homme gets bashed to hell about reformulations. Um, so that is one thing about the YSL UM lineup is reformulations and, of course, longevity and projection problems on a lot of these fragrances. That is one thing that you need to look out for. Now on to the real GBU portion of the good and bad and the ugly on the UM series. Let's start it off with the best in the game, the top seller, the most popular fragrance of the lineup. You would think it would be LUM, but no. It is La Nuit de L'Homme, the 2009 release. Um, I believe the success of this kind of overshadowed the, the greatness of this particular fragrance. So uh, La Nuit de L'Homme is their, their, their crown, the crown jewel of the UM series. Um, it sells very, very well. Um, it always gets talked about, and especially in our YouTube fragrance community. It started back in 2009 when it got released with yours truly, J.R. Ryder in 2010 and among others, right up to now, the current reviewers like Jeremy Fragrance that are pushing this stuff. So um, La Nuit de Lum just continued to get uh, love. And it's a good thing. La Nuit de Lum, very much the, one of the most popular top sellers. My personal choice. Now, I would, it was close, but I would utilize this one. And that's for sentimental values, the first one that I purchased. And um, I really, really enjoy this one. Lum is my personal choice as the best of the lineup. Now, the most underrated would have to go to two fragrances of this lineup, and it would have to be two Parfum editions. This is L'Homme Parfum Intense, and then we de L'Homme Le Parfum. I believe these two are the ones, in my personal opinion, are the two that are the most underrated from the brand. The most overrated, ooh, what is the most overrated? I have to, it's a great scent. It is, uh, but it does get a lot, a, a lot of love. Um, it really does. And I'm not saying it's not, um, you know, valid, but at the same time, there is other fragrances that are as, as good as La Nuit de L'Homme in the UM series and other fragrances in our fragrance journey. So La Nuit de L'Homme, the most overrated. The ugly. <laughs> I'm going to get lynched for this one again. L'Homme Libre. Um, I, I, I think it's the weakest of the whole bunch. Um, it really shows its synthetic side, and these are fairly synthetic scents, but there's a lot of them that do it really well. These two right here emphasize on, on many notes, and they do it very, very well. L'homme libre, I just didn't like it. I really didn't, and that is the ugly. The classic. <laughs> what is the classic one? I'm still pulling for you, L'homme. <laughs> the original um, I'm still pulling for you, buddy. Um, I think that is the classic from the brand. It's the one that started it all. New kid on the block. Well, I don't own it. It's Lum Cologne Bleu 2018 release. Um, I don't own it. So it, that is the new kid on the block. But personally, from my collection, my newest uh, fragrance from the Lum series, it's been a while, 2015. It's the last time I bought a Lum uh, fragrance, and that is La Nuit de Lum Lane House. This one, the middle of the road, or I like to dub them the forgotten, are the ones that really aren't that bad. They're not that great. They're just in the middle of the pack and they may get 
they're, maybe they should get a little bit more. And that's La Nuit de l'Homme Intense, La Nuit de l'Homme Le Parfum, L'Homme Parfum Intense, and L'Homme Cologne Gingembre. Um, I really think that those four in my collection are the ones that are in the middle of the pack. Not as great as the two originals, uh, but they do the job very, very well. So my final take on the Um series, the Um series I feel is a series that if you own one or two, you're set. Um, I really think that you don't have to buy them all like I do, like they're Pokemon. <laughs> if you're looking for my suggestion, these this is a perfect complement to each other. I just feel that this is just so great, especially if you have a small collection and you're looking, you're, you're really liking these Um series, this is the two to go with. Your daytime, your nighttime, um, you know, and they do have, they work so well together. Uh, but as always, I don't want to tell you what to do, um, but definitely if you're looking at the UM series, sniff them all. Sniff them all and you may see something um, that you would want to purchase instead of those. I look past longevity and projection problems with the UM series because there is on many of these. To me, it's not really an issue. The only one that it's a real issue with me is the gingembre. Why? Because I think this is an all-star fragrance. I really feel like Cologne Gingembre really has that really beautiful, it has that, it could be a great summer and spring scent, but it just doesn't last at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> Overall, L'Homme Libre is the worst to me. And that is a huge kudos to the brand because it just, it did get five bottles out of 10 out of me. But if you have smelt L'Homme Lib, uh, you'll see that there is some quality to the fragrance. It's not a stinker by any means, uh, but it does give a kudos to the rest of the lineup. To me, if L'Homme or La Nuit de L'Homme did not exist, the men's section in YSL could have been in a huge 10 year slump here, like many other designers that can't get back to that spectrum. Um, YSL's name is a little higher than a lot of their counterparts that are in a slump, AKA Gucci. They were on par as far as men's fragrance game and then all of a sudden Gucci fell apart as YSL continued to hover where they're supposed to be. Um, so thank these two fragrances right here because it put them back on the map in the men's game. And I applaud YSL to be faithful to the, f the noses that created these fragrances to give those noses more work, more briefs with all of these and not going too far away from the originals as far as the notes go. Uh, a successful line in my personal opinion. Bravo to YSL, I really like this online. A lot of people don't in the community, but as a designer head, I certainly appreciate the online and I like wearing these. These get uh, wearings any given season. That's the great thing about this lineup. You got all your seasons covered with this one. Now let's get into what's missing in my collection because I am still missing a lot of fragrances from this online. And this is where you guys come in. I want to hear your take on these fragrances that I don't own. I don't own six of these. So let's run those through again. Um, we'll start it off with L'Homme Eau de a 2007 release. It is, of course, the one that was released before this. Probably almost impossible for me to get. I'm sure that one's not going to get any votes anyway, unless you're a jerk. <laughs> Next one is a flanker to L'Homme Libre. Again, very hard to find, but it is the Cologne series, the Cologne uh, Tonic uh, by Olivier Polge, which may be a good thing. 2013 release and I'll do my best to find that one. Next is the sport version, Lum Sport 2014 release. Next is maybe the one that I think is going to win is Lum Ultime. I smelt it in store. Again, I put it on a strip and I know that's not a telltale sign to, to, you know, bash a fragrance, but I wasn't really a fan of Lum Ultime, but I may change my mind once I bring it into the fragrance dungeon right here and give it a try. Next is the, of course, newish release, La Nuit de L'Homme Eau Electric 2007 release. And lastly, L'Homme Cologne Blue, which is the brand new release 2018. Um, that would be another one that I would be interested in. So that is a subscriber's choice. If you don't know what to put in the comments below, you can put that in. You can suggest one out of those fragrances. Which one do you think I should check out? Well, the series is done. A return of GBU on my channel. Please comment below what you think I should buy next from the UM series. What are your GBU from this line? What are your thoughts on the UM lineup? Do you hate it? Do you love it? 
Can you not look past the many reformulations that some of the best sellers have gone through or, or longevity and projection problems? So I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this um, lineup. What do you think about this whole lineup? And what do you think about GBU returning? Love to hear your comments on that. Thank you for watching YouTube. Thank you for the support. Have a good one.